the Happy 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 Mozilla. And hopefully um, you're ready to present your project in two minutes or less uh, on the Google Hangouts or the Google uh, document. There's a roll call. Um, there's also an opening question. And that question is, if you awoke one day as a flower, which flower would you choose to be? And so far, we've learned that there's more than four types of flowers, some interesting flowers, lots of sunflowers. Um, so feel free to add your, um, your Twitter and your GitHub to your roll call. Um, fill out the opening question. And if you have a really cool flower, um, drop in a link there. It's kind of like giving people a, an e-flower. Um, other than that, I'll pass it off to Cynthia. Um, she'll explain what we're doing today. Cynthia, you're muted. I am muted. Um, I was like, don't mess up the last call and I already messed up. <laughs> Just kidding, welcome. <laughs> I'm Cynthia, I know how to use Zoom. <laughs> so um, welcome to Mozilla Open Leaders. The vision of Mozilla Open Leaders is to strengthen open projects and communities around the world. And we are going to um, talk about what everyone's been doing for the last 14 weeks. And it's gonna be super awesome. It is our, um, wait, we're, am I doing the wrong part? Nope. Oh, sorry. I messed up again. Um, yeah, so just remember the community participation guidelines. I suppose we should put the link to the document in um, the chat as well if you're joining us here. Um, so be respectful, honest, inclusive, accommodating, appreciative, and open to learning from everyone else. Do not attack, demean, disrupt, harass, or threaten others or encourage such behavior. Um, we also have this section here for Friends of Mozilla. So are there new contributors to your project? Anyone doing awesome work? You can highlight them here. Um, friend of Mozilla and why they're awesome. Um, so go ahead and put um, those shout outs in there. All right. So are we going straight into the presentations? Sweet. Yeah, let's, uh, let's kick it off. Um, so we can just we're, we're going to go by the uh, the order that they are in the Google Docs. So is, is Cassandra with Internet yet to here? So that means if you need a little more time, maybe uh, grab the ones in the end. Otherwise, we will just go by the way that they are ordered here. I think Cassandra just joined in Zoom. So maybe let's give her a chance to get settled. All right. Some we'll people are writing excellent friends of... with Mozilla's. <laughs> it's true. Well, we can go and see uh, Rob is thanking his awesome co-host, Cynthia. I missed her. She is awesome. <laughs> oh. And Berenice is thanking her mentor, Paul, for all contributors to the Galaxy Training Network. Oh, and all contributors to the Galaxy Training Work, especially Saskia and Helena. Very nice. Thank you, everyone, for contributing. <laughs> and if anyone else has people to thank on their project, uh, put it in there. But now, <laughs> Cassandra, are you online? Um, Did Felix just raise his hand? <laughs> I think I saw that. OK. <laughs> I see Cassandra in Zoom. Well, let me unmute. Should we, back, should we come back to her? Hey, Cassandra, oh. can you hear us? There you go. I just yes. Hear. yes, 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 oh. yes, yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. Do you want to do your presentation on Internet Yaru? No. Okay. Let me just uh, fill in on the form first, and then I'll. I could come much later. Okay. We'll put like yours what, at the very what, bottom then. Yes. 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 Kindly. All right, I will cut and paste that and we'll move on to the next person. Okay. All right, the next one is the Chaos Project. Good morning, everyone, at least here. Good afternoon, wherever you are, whatever time. The Chaos Project is creating metrics to understand our open source community health. The problem that we are solving is that companies are using open source 
in a lot of their work, open source has become the foundation for our digital infrastructure. But we need to make sure that the software we use actually is maintained and helpful. So we need to understand how well are these communities doing. And right now it's a sense of, is this a good project or not? And there's no data, no science behind it. So we develop metrics to really understand these uh, communities much better. In an ideal future, when you look at an open source project, you can calculate chaos metrics and then determine this is a good project that will be maintained for the next 20 years and we can build our products and services on top of this. In so what chaos is really doing is establishing a uh, standard for these community health metrics so that we can understand this. And then we also built out uh, tools to calculate them. We work with industry leaders, companies, open source projects, and members from across the open source ecosystem. Ways that anyone can help us is really bring in your expertise, your experience with open source, join the conversation and give us feedback on the metrics or propose your own metrics. Just let us know what you think and maybe even try out metrics in your own context and let us know how they work for you. And yeah, that, that's really what uh, chaos is all about. Nice. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, just fill those in under the project that you're interested in. Um, and so I have a question. How, how would you, um, if I had an open source project, like how would I, what was the, what would be the best way to get involved with this to see um, if I'm up to those metrics? The best way to get involved is to join our mailing list, follow the conversations and chime in. And then the second best way is to join our weekly calls. We have one chaos overall call, and then we have specific calls, one focusing on diversity and inclusion metrics, and one on growth, maturity, and decline metrics. So whichever direction you're more interested, we have specific calls. And that's where most of the activity is happening. Perfect. Thank cool. You. Thank you. All right. So um, I guess moving, moving on, if there aren't any other questions, um, Equity Unbound, Maha, Catherine, and Mia, are, are you all ready? It looks like Maha started screen sharing. So that's it. <laughs> Same time. <laughs> Okay, so um, Equity Unbound arose out of the aspirations of three educators, the three of us. Um, we benefited from the open web in our professional development and teaching. And we noticed that most intercultural learning experiences that we've seen don't take advantage of the open web or the potential for participatory and connected learning. And we also noticed that equity is rarely tackled in such learning experiences. So we created Equity Unbound. It's an open curriculum that is equity focused and it uses connected learning to teach intercultural learning. So our motto is the only way to make borders meaningless is to keep insisting on crossing them. This is a quote from the journalist Lena Munzer. Equity Unbound is both an open community and a crowdsourced web resource for learners and educators at all levels. The Equity Unbound website serves as a repository for both curated and contributed curricular materials. So there are seven topics we chose to address during the design phase of our curriculum. And we began with some resources and then added and crowdsourced others as the experience progressed. Uh, participants collaborate with social network conversations using our hashtag UnboundEc and live studio visits. Uh, these are synchronous video conversations at a few set times during the term with authors of some of the works we have been reading or discussing. 
Um, activities also include blogging and collaborative multimedia making. And anyone is welcome at any point in time to contribute or expand or remix our resources and our activities. Our Twitter hashtag is hashtag Unbound Ec. Um, and it's both an open forum and an ongoing conversation. Thank you, Mia and Maha. Um, to conclude, we're looking to the future in the project. We plan to use what we've learned from our first experience of Equity Unbound this term, from one another, from our students and various collaborators, and through the Mozilla Open Leaders experience to continue to build equity-focused intercultural learning experiences on the open web. Um, we recognize that this is challenging work, but we believe it's vitally important. Um, because a healthy web and healthy society requires that we find and nurture ways to be open to and with each other across all borders. And what drives us in, um, is our, in our work is, is hope for the future. Um, I think we have one final slide there. Um, so many thanks to Mozilla and to all of you for nurturing that hope that drives us, um, helping us with our work and inspiring us with your own work. Great, thank you all. Um, are there any questions for Equity and Bound? Um, have some comments in the in the Google Doc. Love the framing of equity, um, etc. Any other questions? Thank you for the comments, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much. Awesome. Up next is Peblio. I hope we're saying all these right can different interject if we don't. Uh, which is Esther and uh, Mathura. Are you here? Yes. Ah, excellent. Take it away. Okay. Um, so Peblio is an instructional tool and resource sharing platform for computer science teachers. So computer science in K-12 schools is fairly new and there's a lot of confusion around like what to teach and how to teach it and very few teachers are trained um, and prepared to do that. Um, and most who are teaching it are the only teacher in their school and really often their district who are uh, teaching computer science. So Publio is a classroom slash beginner friendly instructional tool that makes it easy to create coding lessons, worksheets, and tutorials, as well as an online community for teachers to share adaptable resources with each other. So teachers can come to Publio, find lessons, adapt them for their classes, and use them in their classrooms all in one uh, place, so to speak. Um, so in addition to a teaching tool that we're building, we hope that Publio will bring together like new and experienced uh, computer science teachers to build a stronger uh, community of CS educators. Um, and people can help us by um, checking out the tool and providing feedback, um, which they can do on the tool itself, and um, contributing resources to the community, because we're in the middle of building the community site now, um, and or helping with the code if they want to. That's pretty much it, unless Matsura has anything to add. No, that was everything. Um, as Esther mentioned, we would uh, love for you to contribute resources and uh, be a part of our community. Thanks. Awesome. Make sure to check out that demo link. I'm on it right now. Looks very impressive, super cool. Um, your comments, questions, um, feel free to fill those in. Looks like there's just a lot of um, some praise. I'm not really need questions. We'll give it one more sec before we move to the next or the next project. Um, I do have a question. Oh, perfect. I didn't feel like typing. <laughs> <laughs> do you uh, do you work with groups like the Hour of Code? I don't know if that's Canadian or um... yeah, no, we have an Hour of Code on Code.org's website. You can check it out. Oh, perfect! I should have just clicked. Cool, thanks. <laughs> cool. All right. Cool. Thank you, Thank you so much. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so our next project: Firefox, Firefox browser to browser radio communication for internet access. Or any of those um, presenters? Here, ready? Hello. 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 Yeah, uh, this is Provin. Hello. Hi. 
We can hear you, Pravin. We can hear you. Uh, yeah, this is Pravin. And the, our project, Firefox Project to Browser Radio Communication for Internet Access is about establishing uh, a, a communication over radio frequency using software different radios between two systems. And this actually helps in avoiding the internal individual censorship. For example, if you're a student, if you're a campus, if you're a student in a campus, and if you're an engineering student and want to access a political science repository, but in which you are not eligible to access, so but you want to access it. So the thing is that you can ask your friend uh, who is a political science student to access the request from your system, uh, from your system, and communicate and uh, from your system to radio frequency communication, and so that you can access uh, political science repositories on behalf of you through the through your friend system. Which means you can actually you can actually, you can actually you are you are writing your own IP address as well as accessing the resources on the web. On the web, which is not meant to access for you. So, so this is basically to circumvent the in, individual internal censorship, and our projects are uh, right now our projects in a stage that we can uh, we can actually send the text messages over radio frequencies using software different radios between the two systems. And thing is that your systems should be within the range of uh, 100 or 200 meters. It depends upon what hardware model that you use that you attach to your system. So. So, so far, we have implemented our transfer of text between two systems, and we need to automate the trans receiving process for more user flexibility. You can actually find our project at GitHub and also our design documentations and our open canvas model, which explains that how this project is open and how in what ways that you can contribute to this project. And others can help in integrating Firefox and GNU radios and software different radio based testing. And encrypting a text over over the air, and developing some modules such that it's it shouldn't such that users users shouldn't require any technical assistance for using this. Obviously, these are the things that we're expecting. So this is our project. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, are there any questions from anybody here? Some nice comments on the Google Doc. Um, hi, all. Uh, just want to add uh, something to the Pravin. Uh, um, like we, we are the group in that. So, uh, like Pravin said, that uh, we uh, we want to establish an internet connection where there there is no access by utilizing a browser browser add-on with the hardware named uh, software defined radio so uh, uh, we came from a very like four months to work on this and uh, we kind of uh, uh, looked at different examples of the browser add-ons uh, where we can actually how can we interact uh, the external devices to the add-on while um, initiating it so uh, we came across some message messaging add-on where we can access USB connection or something like that. Uh, so well, we want to explore this connection to actually how a fight or how a programming script can be um, uh, initiated uh, using the add-on. So uh, if any one of you came across this, please, please use our uh, project repo and please contribute. Start contributing it. Let's fuel the open internet. That's, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Really great work. Um, awesome. Cool. Thank you. Cool. The next project is I blindly accept T's and C's. Okay. Hi. Uh, can you can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay. So I'm Srivari SP, and this is Madhurish. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Um, our project title is uh, I blindly accept terms and conditions. I'll just yeah. Okay. So this is, um, yeah. So have, have any of you blindly accepted uh, one of these documents, terms of service or a terms of conditions or a privacy policy? Chances are most of you have. And uh, the main thing that we wanted to focus with our project is that we need the users to be aware of what they're going to give up in terms of uh, privacy and security when they sign up for softwares and products, when they don't read the terms and conditions. 
thoroughly. So we went ahead and we started building out a tool which would pass the terms and conditions from a traditional document and display the important terms and the important clauses which would matter the most to their users. And that's what we want to do with our project. So basically take the terms and conditions, simplify it and put it in a presentable way to the user so they can make sense of it and uh, make calculated judgments based on that. Yeah, so go going on with our journey so far, it's been great with Open Leaders and we've, we've conducted a few uh, workshops and boot camps kind of, kind of sessions where we taught other people how to build this project. So there are, there are certain tools and technologies that are required to uh, build this project. And we taught other, other students that uh, we could enroll. We taught them how to build uh, the tools for this project. And we uh, also shared our project with them so that they could contribute to us. And we have uh, kind of, because we are college students, we got in a few contributors because we shared our uh, experience through Open Leaders and we uh, got help for building our project so far. And uh, uh, we we plan to build the project more ex exhaustively. We want to curate a better data set and build our tool and hopefully ship out a plugin for Firefox, which would uh, parse the data. Uh, any other? Yeah, um, that's it. And uh, with, uh, all of you are welcome to contribute to our project. You can. Uh, yeah. So that's our project repo. Uh, we'll probably also leave a link in the docs. Uh, feel free to check it out and uh, we are really looking forward for some of you to come and contribute to our project. Thanks. Perfect. Nice work. Uh, just whipping through the comments here. Super cool. Um, people like how you opened the development process. Great work. Uh, the best ideas. Um, Oh, the simplest, there we go. <laughs> and this is one of them, I need this in my life. Amazing work, such an important topic. Um, it is, if sometimes I get carpal tunnel, like scrolling through some of those terms and conditions. Um, so awesome work. Next up. All right, um, Galaxy Training Material and Instructors. Um, Bernice, are you ready? Oh, no. She's unmuted, so. Now, now muted. Maybe, maybe not ready. Okay. Sometimes I have to play with the, the, the microphone settings. They get set to something weird. Mm. We'll okay. move you to the bottom, Berenice. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so hopefully Alex is ready. Yes, I am. Great. Hang on, let me just share. Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect, thank you. Uh, so yeah, hi, um, I'm Alex and my project is uh, Adon Locked and uh, we're working with educational communities to make puzzle games so that players can learn digital skills, uh, engage in the World Wide Web safely and also contribute to the development of a healthy internet. Um, so we had our sort of prototype pro uh, launch at MozFest in October uh, in our youth zone uh, where we had our trial prototype lock box which consists of an online puzzle which players have to solve uh, in order to gain, uh, get the combination code to open their locks box and uh, win the prizes inside. Going forward in the future, um, so I am working at a college with some of our students and we're going to be focusing on creating uh, three new lock box challenges focused at primary school children, so at age 10, uh, which we're going to run at a local primary school, well-born primary school uh, with 10 uh, year, uh, 10 year old students there. And then in the 25th of April, we're looking to um, launch our Ada Unlock website and then hopefully um, return to MozFest in 2019 uh, with our new puzzles. Uh, in terms of what we think success uh, will look like in the future for us, is if we can get more contributors to work with us, especially in, in um, areas of education. Uh, we were working on developing more puzzles and also to get our own students at college to go and run Adrian Lock workshops at all the local primary schools in our area uh, in North London. Uh, our big vision for um, this project is uh, for Adrian Lock to be the website that educators can go to for open source interactive puzzles uh, and that our, our material will allow non-technical users to create their own custom interactive puzzles and inspire their learners 
um, in STEM subjects. We feel that this is really important um, at, at for us at Ada because um, we want to use gamification and project-based learning uh, to teach and encourage our students into STEM. However, a lot of the project, uh, products we found on the market that aim to support in this come at a very high price tag and uh, most educational establishments can't afford it. We don't have the funds to. So Ada Unlocked aims to give a DIY approach alternative to the high cost options, um, which will allow all educators, regardless of their technical abilities or the amount of money their, their workplaces have, create their own interactive uh, learning power, puzzles and experience to make um, learning fun for their students. So if you'd be interested in either running a workshop, um, designing or building your own puzzle, or you would just like to have a talk and see if, um, any information you want at all, um, here are our contact details. It'd be great to get more people involved. Cool, thanks so much. Um, comments on the Google Doc, yay games and learning. <laughs> um, I tried this and it's hard in a fun way, many plus ones, um, me too, I needed a hint. Um, awesome, how many students per teacher roughly? Uh, at the moment we do it in uh, groups. So the biggest groups that we've ever done with it have been, we had 50 students in groups of five, so 10 teams against each other was the biggest trial we had with it. Uh, generally though, it works very well. I mean, in pairs, when we were at Mosfest, we did it in pairs, um, but generally it works better if you're not just doing it by yourself, because you, it's easier to go and bounce ideas, especially with the programming challenges as well. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you. Cool, up next, we have password parties with Ben. Nice, looks like he's sharing his screen. Uh, ben, are you? I'm still muted. I just unmuted you, you Ben. You are live. Great. Uh, hi, guys. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to look at password security as a topic that very few people understand or think is important. And I'm using Kanye as my reference here. Um, you may have seen that he used four zeros for his password on his phone. Um, so that was an inspiration for me to take this as an idea. The context of um, the kind of web security um, is, I think, pretty convincing. There are 95 passwords stolen every second. People use easily guessable passwords across multiple devices. Um, and hacking is becoming way more sophisticated. You might have seen this year that Reddit was hacked and, and data leaked after they um, managed to get hold of uh, one of the employees' phones. And even though they were using two-factor, managed to get in via that route. So there are massive challenges with password security across the world. Um, I put this out to some folks on Twitter and asked people what their stories were, and everyone has a password horror story. Um, you know, people using basic passwords, not really thinking about the security uh, and the, the implications of using bad passwords. Um, and it's, this again inspired me to kind of uh, take a, another look at this. My challenge I thought was, was doing this, this one thing, it's moving password security from an area which is formalized and taught or something that is seen to be kind of um, professionalized in some way to something that was easily um, accessible and inclusive and can be done with your friends or your family. Um, not enough people, I think, have access to people who are technically skilled and, and know um, a good degree of um, understanding about password security. And so this was the shift that I was kind of interested in and, and actually not seeing it as something that was a technology problem, but a human problem instead. Um, so I ran my own party. Um, it wasn't a particularly big party, but um, my, I had some friends and um, some friends of friends who came around and we spent an hour and a half talking about um, some of the key challenges in, in having good passwords and really skilling them up on uh, areas of password security that they were interested in. So things like encryption and password managers and the way the browsers are beginning to store passwords now and, and what that means for your data. Um, and they really loved it. Um, we had one person, Gina, who said she had literally no idea that any of this kind of ecosystem existed and that she was going to go away and have a look at it. Um, the guy on the left-hand side, Steve, is a friend of mine, and he set up a password manager in the course of the session. Which 
is great. Um, so people are starting to explore all these these ways of storing their data much more cleverly. Um, unfortunately, that's only one, and it's Hard to scale these kind of events. So, I'm looking to run a further pilot at a school in London. Um, with the feedback that I've got from that first session, um, I was really conscious during my. my Time with open leaders that it was just me as well, and, and I struggled. Bit I think to to. to work through the program and um, because it was just me and I did a better job of finding people who are data analysis projects is just not. And so I'm hoping that this curriculum will fill in that gap by training researchers just the minimum amount of things that they need to do so that they actually do the things. Um, and eventually we'll have a lot more research code released and what is released released in ways that we can remix it, reuse it, apply it to new data sets. Um, so far in the Open Leaders program, I have built an outline with learning objectives and starting and filling in some activities and exercises for the learners to complete during the workshop. And I've scheduled a pilot for February at Brown University. So if anyone's local, you're welcome to join. And I would, I would welcome in the meantime, um, more activities or examples to use in the workshop and to continue conversations about what this really like minimal set of open source practices that could make a big difference for researchers looks like. And in terms of sustainability, I've talked with the Carpentries about adding my lesson to their lab, their lab program when it opens in the spring, which is a way to make the lesson more findable. So thank you. Cool, thanks, Sarah. Um, comment section, a lot of love for the Carpentries. Um, love that you're inviting others to pilot at their own institutions. Um, and yeah, great material. Thank you. All right, up next, uh, Cassandra, are you on the call? Internet, yet to. Coming back to you. Uh, 
Um, trying to find her on the. I see her in the participants list. Cassandra, can you hear us? Yes, yes, yes. There, yes. We, go. there we go. <laughs> can you hear me? Yep. Okay, so uh, what our project is about um, first is digital inclusion for all, and our focus is persons uh, who are living with disability. So for for the past um, few months that we've been working on this project, uh, first uh, the project was birth, if I could use that word, during the Mozfest um, open. That was no, 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 no. Yeah. Not, not most, okay. Either most first or, yeah, actually, yeah, most first, the one that was in May, yeah. And then uh, after that, we, what we have worked towards is involving uh, persons who are living with disability. So for early next year, we are planning, um, we are planning to have a pilot project uh, based on uh, persons living with hearing disability. We have already approached a number of uh, organizations who will partner with us to just teach uh, persons living with uh, hearing the deaf, short, uh, in short, on the digital rights, on how to best uh, maximize or even just be secure in, in their usage of the internet. So where people can help is one, uh, they can sign up as volunteers through our website, that is uh, internetyetu.org. Yeah, as volunteers, uh, they can point us to, uh, okay, because I've seen the many projects where people are developing curriculums and all that. So what our work will be, uh, one, uh, we'll use, because uh, we've already approached a number of people uh, in the project to, so that we can use sort of their curriculum to teach these people. Uh, what else am I supposed to say? Uh, okay, so yeah, basically that's it. Uh, okay, yeah, and then uh, we'll have uh, meetup sessions. We've already had one, but then we'll have another one uh, sometime mid January, where if someone is in Nairobi, they can join. Uh oh. Sounds like you dropped off. Cassandra. Must have been the Wi-Fi. But they will be having a meetup in Nairobi, which sounds like it's the last thing <laughs> that's written down in that section anyways. Okay, well, there's a couple questions in the um, Google Doc. So maybe we can uh, just address those um, if, you're, if you can still hear us. <laughs> Otherwise, I, I think we'll just move on to the next project. Hello. Oh. Oh, Sandra's back. Sandra's back. Oh yeah, yeah. My my network disconnected. I am sorry. My network disconnected. So I was saying that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I was saying that uh, one of the ways that people can actually help us is just by one participating through our project so we'll, we, are, we are looking forward to having a pilot for the day sometime mid mid next month that is around 12 just here in Nairobi so that uh, we can do a digital rights uh, just to teach uh, persons with uh, hearing disability or about their digital rights we'll have a, a side language interpreter and then yeah, just it. And uh, we also wish to thank Joy and the whole cohort who have been uh, who have been there. So for us during uh, yes, and then there's another person called Laura Teach who I met through this program, and she was able to come to one of our meetups uh, early this month. So I think generally we benefited so much from this project, and we hope to scale it up so that it can be replicated in other countries in the near future. Yeah, thank you. Awesome, thank you. 
Uh, there was just a couple of comments and questions. What kind of volunteers are you looking for? It looks like there's already an answer for that. And then what is a Yetu? Oh. Oh, sorry. Okay, so Yetu is a Swahili word that means hours, 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 yeah. Like uh, possessive for mine in plural, hours, yeah. So that is oh, how uh, nice. we, yeah. <laughs> Great, that, thank oh, you. Yeah. Awesome, we'll move on to the next project. All right, so back to Boss Events Planner, another ready to go. <laughs> okay. Um, I have slides, but I cannot share them because I'm on Wayland and Zoom doesn't just inform me that they don't support it yet. Um, so yeah, the, the Fuzzy Lens Planner is a project that comes out uh, of the events team that the REST community has. And we figured out that for a lot of events that we want to support, we have to repeat the same and the same things over again, which is probably the point where you should start writing them down. And what we came up with is we want to have a central location where we write down everything that you need to running a small to medium size open and, and free event. Um, free in the sense of free software, that doesn't mean that you can't charge for it. Some things need money. Um, but there's a lot of small subtleties that people might ignore on the first go. For example, how do I, and, and that are incredibly, like the solutions are pretty simple and pretty pretty standard. For example, how do I deal with uh, food? How do I deal with allergies and all these kind of things? Um, every time I present that project, everyone's like, "Oh, food!" Like when I read my first stuff, that was the biggest thing to um, that we didn't know how to work with that, and it's all easy later. So um, we came up with this idea of making this planner, and during the open leadership course. Um, we figured out that just writing down stuff is probably not the thing that we need to do, but to actually think about how people can use and reuse that thing. And um, yeah, was pretty interesting. We talked to two librarians about that subject, and that was pretty fun. Um, so what are we searching for as contributions is, um, first of all, we're searching for people that actually want to use this and have questions, because it's easiest to actually get uh, to work along the questions that people have. Um, the other thing is we're searching for people that had experiences at events, both as attendees and as people running events um, to, actually sh um, to actually share them. Also, we don't want to be like the singular resource out there. There's tons of writing, but it's all kind of fractured, and we don't want to Right, we don't necessarily need to write our own stuff. So if anyone need, it knows of any kind of resources that we don't yet know about, um, we would be happy to, for example, link to them or um, have them as uh, extended documentation. Yeah, and uh, finally, we'll probably need a website and text review. Most of the people in our team are actually not. Native English speaker. So having people reviewing text would be right. Yeah. OK. Cool. 
economics of free software is often a salary copies to improve it. It's not free software. And a couple more things rolling in right now. Like it's like do with the brush with the writing to a lot of people that touch the web brand. All right, yes. We can hear you. Great, good. And for such a game, I'm going to check in by interesting. So, I will, so nowadays, I'm going to ask you to ask you And now, I just need to learn how to use and analyze their data. And they are not the to be able to do it. So, to help them access these tools, um, there is a tool that I developed 10 years ago. And it's maintained by a worldwide community. But uh, giving them access to this tool is not enough. We need to teach them how to use this tool and which tools using in which case, depending on their questions. So over the last two years, uh, with the Galaxy Training Network, we developed and shared online a collection of training materials and an infrastructure to deliver trainings. And a lot of uh, instructors are using that now. But I wanted to support them more than these awesome people that give trainings using Galaxy. So during the last months, during the program, so the Open Leader programs, I worked with the existing community to collect a training philosophy. So how people are giving training. Uh, create. Uh, Training and book with recommendation on how to give trainings. Uh, tips and to give training and organize community calls and discussion sessions to really build a more community trust from this. So next, I will work with this to build a lot of more of community and um, I will try to share for the internet that we're existing training community like the Capron Trees to build a lot of training communities. And so if you have any knowledge about training, I will be happy to have your way of giving training and work and contribute to our collaboration fest that we organize every three months live. So that's more than my place. And it's a program. So yeah. The more documentation, the better. Yeah. Super cool. Comments, just basic joining. That's probably super important. Nice work. I'm glad you're focusing on collaborating with existing groups. The Galaxy community is, is super big. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. So I think our next presenter is um, Itzel, who I don't believe has had a chance to put in um, her summary in the Google Doc, but we have the link for literacy for the deaf in the Google Doc. So you can link out to that if you're interested. Um, and you can also translate the page to English if you don't know Spanish in the right hand corner. Itzel, are you ready? Um, also, I want to say I put this. Oh, she needed herself again. There you go. I put this in the doc for her. She put it in the chat. So, Itzel, did you want to talk about your project? Yes, I want to. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, okay, I have a done a presentation uh, in regards of uh, the of the general life hems I should follow and I don't know what so sorry I don't know how to to share it um, oh. oh you made a presentation so at the bottom of zoom there's a share button that's in green yes I have seen it uh, well uh, um I would like to present uh, my uh, the 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 web that we have done since uh, Mozilla Open Leaders uh, program, and this uh, page is right here. 
is uh, literacy for the deaf uh, com. And well, I, I don't know if you can see it. It is uh, just in, in the link of the chat. Uh, uh, yes. And, and uh, well, indeed, uh, this project is, uh, we are a group of deaf uh, people and uh, Indian communities. Where our page is built uh, over the, the mission, vision, that uh, we learn from Mozilla Open Leaders Program. And uh, well, we um, settle our page in uh, five items uh, in English and in Spanish uh, as uh, the beginning, but uh, and three workshops for uh, in the web for the deaf and Indian communities. And well, we um, in the presentation, uh, I, we said that uh, we have presented uh, this work, uh, uh, the work that we have done with Mozilla in uh, the National Commission of Human Rights here in Mexico. And uh, well, uh, we are finding more collabor collaborators for our uh, project. And uh, in this project, uh, our collaborators, uh, we are uh, proposing do some practices with the community uh, by the beginning here in uh, the Pautla Morelos, which is a very uh, small community. Uh, and we share here a life community together, deaf students and Indian woman handicrafts. And, uh, so that is what we are doing right now. We are uh, recording our workshops. We have made the call over the community to build up these three workshops. The first one of them is, is a deaf uh, entrepreneurship. The second one is leadership. And the third one is biology content uh, workshop. And uh, well, we are doing this in a sign language, Mexican sign language and then we are translating it uh, to English language. And that's our work. All right, um, great. If anyone has any comments for Itzel, um, go ahead and put them in the doc. Cassandra says we're doing a pilot on this in Nairobi. And um, a couple more comments coming in right now, rolling in. Are there, um, I don't see any other presentations listed. Are there any other participants on the call who need to present? Oh, and then someone also said thank you to Itzel and the other non-native um, speakers for presenting in English. Um, so Definitely. that's a, a good comment. All right, I, th I think that might be it for our presentations. Yeah, I don't see anyone else listed in the participant section. Um, but at the very bottom, we have a new volunteer section. So if you're tuning into the stream or you're watching this later, uh, let us know if you wanna help out in any of these projects and we'll make sure to put you in touch with um, someone who presented today. Cool. Um, should we do a cohort photo since we're all graduating? Ooh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to be in the photo, unface mute. If you don't want to be in the photo, face mute. And Cynthia and Rob, I'll let you decide what we're going to, uh, um, what should we do in the picture? Oh. Let's do a, a I vote for a celebratory face. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good. Pretty good. All right. So is everyone who's who wants to be the photo unface muted? I'll make sure. Oh, all right. Everyone looks <laughs> celebratory. I'm gonna screenshot this soon. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> good job, Markopolis. Oh, should we 
yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Could have one where we're all barking, but <laughs> it's harder to pull off in a photo. Yeah, in a photo. <laughs> um, next time. Next. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, Chad, congrats all. Agreed. Congrats, everybody, for your awesome work. It's been really inspiring to see what everyone's been doing. Um, it makes me want to, you know, do some more cool stuff and work with you all. So thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, everyone, for sharing your projects today. Lots of hard work over the past um, few weeks. And uh, the projects have all come very far. Um, I think that the next round of cohorts, um, I think the ability to get involved with those is now closed. Yeah, Abby? Um, yeah. Technically, the forum is still open. We're probably closing it today. So if you know anyone that wants to apply, they can still apply. <laughs> but are, like we publicly closed the forum, but it's still there if they want it. <laughs> so <laughs> if you but there, there'll be another one very soon after. Mm -hmm. Well, nine. So an eight. Eight. So yeah, well, um, dates and details will be later. Announced. Yeah. I'll figure that out later. But um, mm -hmm. thank you all. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Gorilla, did you have a question? Yeah, I think that we need to have a compilation of all projects, at least the resources of all the projects at one place for all the open leaders, maybe yeah. from one to six. Oh, from one to six. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we will be getting something together for this graduating class. Um, yeah. One to six, I cannot promise. <laughs> awesome. Maybe at least six, yeah. <laughs> because uh, because there are different projects that deals with different problems in the internet and other ecosystem. So yes, everybody yeah. may, uh, may one or the other time may need to access those. So why they need to go some other place and search, they can search in open later six. So they can effectively make use of those projects Mm -hmm. so, so that's fine. But I think we can probably end this call early uh, since we finished all our demos. But thank you all so much. Congratulations. Your certificates are coming soon. They'll be in your inbox later this week and maybe next week. We'll see how quickly we get to them. Um, and if you'll get an email from me if you haven't filled out a form yet to get a certificate. <laughs> so thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Work open, lead open. <laughs> Lolo. Lolo. Thank you. Thank you.